Castle, and I'm a member of Tech Coast Angels, also on the board of TCA. And in addition to that, I and a group of other individuals provide free consulting for startup high growth companies at TriTech SBDC. And it's free because our time and effort are paid by the Small Business Administration. Okay. Um, so we'd like to ask you about in preparing to raise capital, how much time and effort should an entrepreneur devote to the process? Well, Chris, the real interesting answer to that is that the capital is the absolute lifeblood of the entrepreneur and his or her startup company. And therefore, how much time and effort should be spent on what's going to be your lifeblood? And the obvious answer is a great deal. Now, let's get a little more specific, however, in answering that. The time and effort in preparation is fortunately one that can be helped, supported, and amplified by a lot of resources that are out there that don't cost any money. There are sources on the internet, there are sources in vis visiting with angel groups. In addition to Tech Coast Angels, there's other angel groups that provide free consulting, free help, free advice and counsel to allow them to have a more effective executive summary as well as business plan to allow them to have a more effective presentation, to have a realistic valuation, to understand what the uses of the money are going to be, and most important of all, to really focus on how the presentation to investors is going to go. Because you can have the greatest idea and the soundest background behind it, but if your presentation to those investors is exceptionally weak, you're out of water before you've even gotten to first base. So it's a very important to take advantage of all the resources that are available and spend the time and the effort in developing that process. In, in terms of that presentation, what are some thoughts or tips that you have for the entrepreneurs? Well, first and foremost, you need to understand the audience to whom you're presenting. A lot of times we have entrepreneurs come in with a very highly technical subject that only maybe 10% of the angels in the audience understand. And yet, these angels are bright individuals that the other 90% I'm talking about, and many times I'm in that 90% group. We can write checks, we do write checks, but you just need to explain it to us in a less technical manner. So number one is be specific and be more general in your uh, explanation so that all can understand. Another cre a key factor in doing this as well is to make sure that when you are making a presentation, you tell us how do you make money? What is your revenue model? And also explain what the pain is that you're addressing and how your approach is unique, better, cheaper, faster, more effective, whatever, than the competition. Because we clearly want to know that the check we're writing to that company is going to be a lot better than it would be if we went to a competitor. Um, would you approach your um, presentation differently for different kinds of angel of angels or individual angels or say even a, a small venture firm? Well, I would certainly approach it differently if I were speaking to one person versus or two people versus a more formal group. Because the more formal group, you're probably not going to get interrupted as you go. And for one or two or three people, you need to create a, uh, your presentation more as a dialogue. So the content may not be that different but the presentation and delivery will be if you have a smaller group than a larger one. And when going out making this presentation, how many times is sort of the magic number? I mean, people do it five times, 10 times, 50 times? Well, the, the, the quick answer to that, Chris, is they do it as often as it takes, or as frequently as it takes to get the money. Right. But in reality, there unfortunately is a high degree of rejection in the entrepreneurial world. And you have to be prepared to run out an awful lot of ground balls because you never know when it's going to turn out to be a double or a triple or even a home run after you first hit the ball. So uh, there's no magic answer to the number, but be prepared for multiple. And certainly far more than 10 and hopefully not as many as 50 would probably be a range that one could expect. Have a thick skin. Absolutely. You've got to have that. Thanks, Tom. Thank you.